Well, Happy New Year. I hope that your New Year's Eve was very happy and you had a good time. It's the new year and we hope that 2021 is a lot better than 2020. We're looking forward to seeing everybody. And today I'm going to be painting for Levi. And I'm going to do an L, and I'm also going to do something I watched last night, a feather. And we're going to do this in the colors of, of blue and red and green and white. So I'll get the camera ready, and we'll go down and start filming. So as you can see, I have taken and used my GoPro and moved it to a speaker stand and it's now above our canvas and hopefully you'll be able to see this. This is going to be a feather. I watched a couple of people do feathers last night and I said, oh, this would be perfect for Levi. So we're going to use the uh, blue, uh, sapphire blue as the background. I'm going to leave a strip uh, open for pouring the and then you'll see how I do it. I will uh, show you the colors when I get them mixed up. Okay, as you can see, I have a 10 by 10 canvas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blue. And this is the Ultramarine Blue Artist Touch. And I'm going to put it around the sides. And go off. And... Try to leave the middle. That's where I'm going to be putting the feather. I'm going to ha have the feather down the middle. So. I'm going to try to spread this blue a little bit. What I'm trying to do is use up my colors that I've had for the last few pourings and start the new year out with new colors. So So now I've got um, two cups. I'm going to layer what colors I want with my feather and one, and the other one's going to be white. So I want to make sure that I do not layer where I'm going to muddy. So I'm going to be putting some golds or whites or something in between the colors so that they do not uh, run and change the color. So I think I'm going to start with red. And if you put white next to red, if you put white next to red, it's going to turn pink. So and I'm going to layer it down the side of the cup. Tries to keep your color more uniform. And if I put blue next to it, it could turn purple. So we're going to put a little gold. Just a little gold in there. And now we're going to come in and we're going to put some of the metallic blue. Remember, I'm going to be making a feather. So I want lots of colors. Then I'm going to be coming in and put a little bit of white in between. Just a touch. Then I'm going to come in with a green. This is Sap Green, Artist Loft. It's a dark green. So I decided to come in after that and put a little bit of the lime green to kind of lighten up. Now I want to repeat these colors um, at least a couple of times. So I'm going to put the gold in again. Then I'm going to put a sky blue. I'm 
This is the first time I've ever made a feather, so. Uh, now I'm going to put in a little bit of gold. Looks so neat last night. And I thought, oh, I'm looking for something for a boy's room. This would be perfect. Now, this is a metallic red that is um, deco art metallics, and it's very deep. So we're going to put that in on the gold. Then I'm going to start over again. So right now it's kind of set up a little bit. So I'm going to try uh, to take my stick. I'm not going to try to do what they call a swipe because I really like these colors. But what I am going to try to do is create a little bit of the feather technique. And it's very thin. So I'm not going to probably be able to do it without putting some color on my stick. So, I might have to come in with the white to drag it. Or I might have to, I have a little bit of a blackish blue that, let's try to come in with that. And the more pressure you put on it, the wider your your uh, line is going to be kind of like that. So now what I'm going to try to do again is stick it in there. I'm going to try to drag out some feather lines. Very unusual. I don't know if this would be for a boy though yet. I'd have to do Levi something else because this doesn't look very boyish. Kind of like it, but I don't think it looks very boyish. I'm going to try with a popsicle stick. It's a little gonna gonna be a little bit thicker. And see if I can get those lines a little thicker. They're going to fill back in. need to do some white on this side over here.
don't want to muddy it, so. So for my first feather, I think this is going to be called a fat feather. Not so bad, but not perfect. I think the paint might have been too thin. So, you know, I'm just learning. Everything's a learning curve right now. So the more you do it, the more that it's going to become more perfect. And right now it's not perfect, but you know, it's not bad. So, I think because of the spots and stuff, I'd like to take and put a little uh, color into the background. And I'm trying to think of what color I would maybe like to do. I'm going to put a little metallic over here. Metallic blue over here. And maybe over here. And then I can run it back into the feather too. I tip it more this way it seems like I'm I'm bringing my feather back in which is good it, it had gotten kind of out so as I tip it more this way it seems like the feather is coming back to to gather let's bring this back down through the center again okay I'm not unhappy with that Maybe take it off the canvas. I like those blues coming in there. Maybe I could swipe it in and give it a different technique. Well, that's kind of mixing in with the background there. And this is kind of, well, it's, it's very unusual. And I'm not going to say I like it per se, but for my first feather, I guess it was a good attempt. So I put parchment paper down underneath the uh, feather. Um, probably that's not going to end up being... Um, Levi's because it seems like it kind of muddied and we'll get something else a little bit better. But while I have these colors here, I'm going to lay down some more colors and use up all my colors and uh, dip his L in it. So I'll uh, have it, uh, I'll speed this up while I'm pouring and I won't be talking.
I am not going to dip that again. That is so pretty. And all those colors. Oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. I am just going to take and put that on the drying rack. And we'll see how that dries out. If I have to touch any edges, I can do that after. But that is just too pretty to even try to, to uh, fix anything because it is just gorgeous. To move the canvas off the drying rack, so. So this is what we call skins. This is the drippings off of the uh, of the pouring, and I've kind of scattered it out to maybe be able to make some pretty jewelry. So I'm going. This is parchment paper, and I'm going to save it, let it dry, and then I'm going to try to make some jewelry out of some of these areas that are very pretty, and uh, some of them just mix. And I believe that they will turn out real pretty. And you don't know when they start drying, they have a, a some color comes out through them. So it's like a marble effect. So welcome back to Levi's project. Uh, the feather, as you can see, really did not come out the way I would like it. So I'm going to, uh, it's dry and I'm going to pour over it and see if I can do a little bit better feather using a few different colors. I'm not going to use the metallic blue as the background here. I'm going to use the Artist Loft blue and uh, it's not as opaque uh, and uh, it's not as translucent and I'm going to see if we get uh, a better cover. Also I'm going to use our new box that we just made today that I posted the video and I didn't find a tray to go on the end like I was looking for but you know I have those dry racks and I thought you know I could put that on there and at least if I do something I could set it over here although I'm not going to set this one over here because it's not level I'd rather leave it on here and I still have the push pins in the back and the tape on it the push pin still could, even though this has got the the uh, rods, the push pins can go on because then when you move it to a, another place, you've got your push pins and you've got your handles. To, uh, but I'm going to leave this set in the tray uh, for overnight. Now, I'll probably go out of frame myself. I'm going to aim it at the canvas for when we're going to pour. Okay, so as you can see, I have a cup. I'm not going to use this whole cup but this will be what I layer my paints in and before I flood the canvas I'm going to go ahead and layer my paints and I am going to start with a red these are going to be a little bit different from last night because uh, I used that metallic red last night and I just felt like it went very, very dull. I know that it would be pretty when I glaze it. I'm not going to use as many colors. I'm not going to use the lime green. Um, I have the red, the blue. I'm putting in some white. I am going to put a touch of the sap green that we had last night, but this is the only layer I'm going to put of it. This canvas is dry, so I can wipe it off without a problem. Now on the green, I'm going to put some gold. Then I'm going to come in with a little touch of the metallic red. 
just a touch of the metallic red. I'm going to do a little bit of gold again. Just going to try to redo my feather. A feather, but it might just be an abstract. Kind of. Well, I'm going to bring you down uh, and show you the wet results. I don't know how they'll dry. I tried to make it more look like a feather and put a little gold because some gold was shining through from the day before. I don't know if he'll like it. It's got a lot of red in it. It's got some blues, so we'll see. But I do like his L. I do have to take and uh, uh, varnish it, but I do like his L. 
Uh, I don't know if these colors will go with his room or not, but once I uh, varnish it, it actually will shine uh, gloss finish. Well, I'm going to try for a third time, maybe third time's a charm, to do something for Levi on this canvas because I'm really just not pleased with it. Uh, for a two-year-old uh, little boy, I think that's kind of scary. So we're going to try today a, a dirty cup pour, and I'm going to try to do a ring pour with it. So we'll see what we get to do. This little artisan tray fits perfect on our little box. So as I fill the cup, I will um, put it right here on the tray and uh, we'll go from there. I found out my GoPro wasn't filming and so here is the dried, uh, well it's not the dried results, but it's the wet results. Um, I did use the uh, dirty pour with a ring pour and then I ended up adding some more colors on top of it because I had lost quite a bit. Um, it's got pits right now and I don't know what's causing that little little dot so uh, I guess the third time I hope is a charm because I do like it and I do hope it dries. I tried to uh, torch it more to see if the bubbles would pop if those were bubbles but I don't know that they're bubbles because they did not pop so I, get, I hope everybody learns through my mistakes and I also hope that you enjoyed it this was a long video because I tried it three times if you like what I do please put like and subscribe it costs you nothing and I need to get subscribers to be in the algorithm of the YouTube. I've got a new slogan, and I think that I'm going to end every episode with, if I can do it, you can do it. At 76 years old, I'm trying something new. And I want most seniors to know that they can do anything they want to do. So if I can do it, you can do it.